As with most things in the automotive aftermarket industry, lift technology continues to evolve and have a significant impact on shop efficiency and profitability. I'm Krista McNamara, Editorial Director with MotorAge, and I'm here today with Tim Vaughn, Vice President of Sales at Vehicle Service Group, or VSG, a Dover company. Tim, thank you for joining me. Hey, good morning. So VSG comprises 13 major vehicle lifting, wheel service, diagnostic, and collision repair brands, including Rotary Lift and Chief. So today we're going to discuss new vehicle lift technology and challenges in the market and learn a bit more about VSG's direction going into 2022. So Tim, let's get started. Um, what new lift technology should shop owners be aware of? Yeah, great question. And I think, you know, there's lots of things we can kind of bring to the front here and talk about. Um, obviously with the growth in electric vehicles, um, you know, shops are just needing different options when it comes to lifting vehicles for service. And, you know, Rotary works closely with the uh, automotive manufacturers to make sure that our lifts, you know, have the necessary adapters and uh, options and accessories to, to lift uh, not only electric vehicles, but obviously standard commercial trucks and passenger uh, cars as well. Um, and so for us, you know, our two post lists today um, have been used mostly with our with a with a wide end ground um, to lift electric vehicles. Um, but we're proud to announce coming up here um, that we'll be launching a new wide um, smart uh, lift in ground lift that is based uh, on our previous uh, in ground smart lift from Rotary. Uh, and it's specifically designed uh, and built by our, by our team in Madison, Indiana, to support you know EV and non EV vehicles. Um, and this new EV lift uh, is going to give you an 85 inch, you know, drive through clearance, um, which again, helps eliminate uh, the drive over the superstructure, uh, which is better for your low profile uh, uh, cars. And it also provides better clearance um, for removing of the EV battery pack and any underbody covers um, that you would see. Uh, the water plungers also allow for, you know, lifting truck bodies off of frames uh, and the smaller footprint you know, enables more lifts in the space, um, to, again, to lower the overall construction cost uh, of a facility versus putting a bunch of two post lifts up. And that also gives you a more, you know, uh, environmental friendly, it's more environmental friendly, it has a low oil reserve uh, and a polymer containment and all this, this uh, design and um, in the system, you know, gives an open, um, aesthetically pleasing for the service environment and more efficiency for the shop. Um, the other thing that we kind of tied to that, um, a previous product that we have that we still have is a shockwave, which is which is uh, gives you additional efficiency gains uh, in the facility, in your facility. Uh, and shockwave is a power unit um, that goes on most of our lifts. It also goes on the new wide end ground lift. And that shockwave is about twice as fast on cycle times, which again gains you more turns and increases your shop efficiency. So Really excited to bring um, this new wide uh, in-ground smart lift out to the market, which will begin to hit at the end of 2021 and really become um, um, widely available throughout 2022 and beyond. Um, the other thing that we've done recently, you know, um, Rotary is is grown quite um, quite fast in the wheel service business, so both tire changers, balancers, and alignment systems. And part of that, we're doing a lot of investment around alignment lifts. Uh, we recently introduced um, earlier this year, the ARO 22 lift, which is our new high capacity 22,000 pound open front alignment lift, which is engineered to support uh, both alignment for passenger cars, as well as for commercial trucks. Um, it's got many great new features, includes a 9,000 pound capacity jack on the front and low, a low profile 15,000 pound uh, rear jack. Um, and again, this is a tremendous um, complement to our alignment systems that we have as part of our overall wheel service um, uh, offering. Uh, we're also big in, you know, wireless technology has kind of really changed, you know, how technicians work in the shop, right? Uh, the same thing for us. I mean, we've invested heavily in wireless technology uh, as a business, and we've kind of taken that to the next step when it comes to lifting technology. Um, and we've got some, you know, new wireless remotes when it comes to our heavy duty uh, equipment like our mobile columns, our flex, our new rotary, our updated rotary mock um, flex mobile columns, as well as our mod 35 uh, in-ground lifts now have um, that wireless technology and that pendant. It makes it easier for technicians to walk around the shop and not tied to a big control panel somewhere away from those lifts. They can operate those around the vehicle. Uh, again, it kind of drives that shop efficiency that uh, technicians and shops are looking for. And I guess the other thing we always like to say, right, when it comes to lifts is that always make sure that you have the right lift size 
for your job, for the equipment that you're, that you're servicing in your shop, um, against the capacity, the site, the size of, of, of the vehicle you're working on, uh, making sure you have the right adapters and accessories, really kind of help complement and, and, and round out that uh, lift offering that you have for your bay or for your shop that you're looking for. So Tim, you touched on electric vehicles and the importance of efficiency. What are some of the other big challenges that your shop customers are seeing? So again, good question. You know, um, shops are seeing, seeing, still seeing technician shortages. Um, and we've seen some of that obviously increase the last, um, last year or so around the pandemic. You also kind of see training gaps, uh, part of the technician uh, shortages and just how to get them trained, uh, both around the vehicle types and the, and the variance of vehicles as well, as well as the shop equipment. Um, you know, overall dealerships are, are way short on inventory um, and just part shortages and how to fix vehicles. They have a lot of delay in parts, which are delaying service and delaying billing and how many jobs they can get done a day. So the whole, you know, the whole shortages around parts components Vehicle shortages are also really, really uh, tough on dealerships right now. Um, and we'll kind of, you know, you, you think about what's happening in the economy and the shortages that you see. Um, so again, just empty lots, they're hungry for cars, you know, technicians are hungry for parts. Um, so all in all, it's it's been a pretty big impact um, recently on the challenges that shops are facing. And also we're seeing more around the EV vehicles uh, beginning to you know, come into the dealerships. Um, but just overall, their planning on how they're going to plan on servicing the electric vehicles are different. You got battery packs and different requirements around safety. Uh, and again, just the shift of the EV growth as, as it comes up in dealerships. Um, you know, today EVs are about three and a half percent of overall sales um, at dealerships. Uh, by 2030, that's going to go up to about 30 percent. So you're going to see a big shift uh, in in that serviceability and how they're selling cars and servicing cars. Um, as you continue to kind of look over the next nine to 10 to 15 years. So now let's talk a little bit about shop productivity. What kind of impact can lift equipment have on a shop's productivity? So, so lifts are a key driver really in making your shop um, not only more efficient, but also bring in a higher level, higher level of safety and ergonomics uh, to, the, to the shop. Um, you know, so you think about it, right? When you're raising a vehicle um, to working height for the technician, um, it depends on the service being performed, of course, but this delivers an optimal uh, working height. The tech can reach the full uh, vehicle, what they're looking at underneath it, you know, beside it, doing wheel work. So again, it drives it overall efficiency and it also brings that safety that, you know, you should require in your facility. So again, think about it, accessing your entire vehicle um, and again, without these advantages that you have with a lift, you know, you're not working at the right light, at the right height. Um, you're not having all the tools needed nearby you to make, you know, the most quick assessment of the situation. And again, just kind of creates gaps around that efficiency and makes your shop um, not as profitable and not as productive, right? Um, and again, if you think about uh, lifting equipment, if it's broken, um, obviously then that is not giving productivity dollars back into your shop. Uh, and again, keeping that, sh that equipment maintained and safe is obviously really important um, for, for the shop. Um, and again, the other thing to know, the shops that lifts have a harder time recruiting uh, techs, keeping techs, right? Because they wanna work in a shop that's clean and efficient and safe and allows them to turn more jobs. Mm -hmm. Now you did touch on safety a little bit. What are some of the biggest safety challenges that shops face with lifts today? Really, I think it's just having technicians thinking thinking safety first, right, versus speed or completion of a job. You know, short shortcuts can cause uh, issues and lots of problems uh, in a shop, right? So we're we're aware of that, and you know, we like to call it lifting it right, right, versus you know not lifting vehicles properly and making sure you have the right tools, whether it's the adapters or accessories or other things, can obviously impact the safety of the lift. Um, keeping your shop clean, the floor clean around your lift and other pieces of equipment, tripping hazards. Uh, so cleanliness is also part of part of that safety when it comes to shop. Um, and the other big thing is obviously regular maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, so again, you want to make sure that, you know, regular maintenance is a key aspect of not just safety, but long life of your of your equipment, all your equipment. Um, you know, Rotary, we have a very large um, and best in class distribution and service network. Uh, and our partners can help you maintain, keep your lift working in optimal um, working order. 
Um, and so it's really important that you know you think you think about that efficiency, keeping your lift operational. Uh, and then again, you can if you're looking for you know lift um, our, our lift partners, and you can find that through our website, um, and you can schedule those service providers to come out and help you can keep that equipment maintained. Um, at, at, again, to work in as efficiently as possible. Great. So now let's talk a little bit about the market as a whole. How has the pandemic impacted vehicle service business practices, including for VSG? I mean, obviously everybody knows, I mean, COVID, the pandemic has really affected our lives, every aspect of our lives, right? Our business is no different um, and how we, how we do our jobs on a daily basis. And I think first and foremost for us, safety of you know our employees, uh, and whether it be um, in the field or in operations, has been our been our primary focus. A lot of uh, our business has worked really hard. Our whole business has worked really hard to drive that safety um, across our business and maintain that focus. But but you know, but overall, the pandemic has really created a volatility in the market. We see it every day. You know, whether you're going to the grocery store, or you're going to buy something from your local home goods store. It doesn't really matter, right? I mean, we've seen a lot of supply chain constraints, component shortages from electronic to just general parts. We kind of talked about, talked about that before, kind of what's affecting the dealership market. We're seeing the same thing on our manufacturing side, right? Just the high cost pressures uh, across the board. Um, again, we talked about component shortages. Logistic pressures have been very significant, you know, long delays in receiving goods. Um, and anything that arrives by container, now you're seeing um, extraordinary delays, also high cost um, are, are definitely impacting that as well. Um, again, just really lots of you know, confusion in the market around supply, ergonomics, um, logistics pressures, and then just maintain all that. Um, as, and then and again, keeping our team safe, right? So all that kind of goes together to kind of create the plan we have as an organiza organization to work through those, those challenges. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the main business focuses for, you know, VSG going into 2022? So look, first off, we're really excited about 2022. And I would say that, you know, kind of some of the things we've talked about uh, that, that's been kind of slowing us down a little bit the last year and a half, we've been working towards lots of great things. Um, you know, we're really excited to be talking about an increase in, in output um, of all of our factories. You know, VSG is a global a leader in global um, manu manufacturing of vehicle service equipment, both lifts and wheel service equipment, uh, as you mentioned before. Um, and we're really excited about the expansion we have ongoing in our Madison, Indiana facility. Mm -hmm. uh, we make a lot of our products there in that facility for the U.S. market. Uh, and we're bringing online, as we talked today, actually, a big plant expansion, uh, which will house a new state-of-the-art paint line. It will also give us some additional expansion in the facility. And we're going to be using that expansion uh, along with other actions to drive additional output of volume and capacity out of our Madison, Indiana facility. We're really excited about that and driving that, that capacity to support our customers and our partners and the demand that we see for our great products. Um, we're also really focusing heavily on, we mentioned it briefly earlier, about our strong growth in our wheel service products. So that will be both you know, uh, in our wheel service, tire changers, balancers, our liners, we also mentioned the alignment lift, like the Aero 22. Uh, we have a, a other great products coming out uh, on our wheel service business um, and all that we mentioned before. We're really excited about, again, getting that out to the marketplace uh, into our partners and our customers' hands. Um, and then we have uh, additional new products that we'll be launching in 2022 uh, around li the lifting uh, business as well. So you get a lot of great things that have, that have been going on with the business, even though we've been kind of you know, locked down somewhat the last mm -hmm. year and a half. As a business, we've really been focused on new products, uh, enhancements to our channel, our, our plan expansion, our facility expansion, and again, strategies around how to, to grow uh, the business and support the demand that our customers are asking for. Um, one of the other big things that we've done as a business, we've invested heavily into more digital platforms. Um, and again, these platforms are kind of to bring our customers and our, inc our both our partners and our end customers you know, quick access to needed information, right, about our products, that whether it be how our partners, you know, access data that they need out of VSG, uh, their, their business information. We've also, uh, we're launching a lot of training we call LMS, uh, Learning Management Systems. So training, online training, both for our partners, for both sales and service, as well as for our end customers in an easy, quick way to get access to training material, 
on equipment and service, et cetera. Um, we're also launching QR codes to all of our equipment, which is, which is also very exciting. So as the world kind of goes digital, people are used to accessing stuff digitally uh, on their mobile devices. We're pushing all that content that we have out to the device, our equipment itself. So you can scan QR codes, you can get training. It kind of goes back to, we talked earlier about gaps in technician training and, and, and those kind of things. We're bringing that to the equipment um, from service to training, et cetera, right? So really a lot of great things going on around the digital front, new products, will service and increased output. And I guess, you know, overall our business is just really looking forward to hopefully getting back to a, a more normal operating mode, right? I think we're all kind of really excited about that. Um, you know, last year and a half has been difficult for everybody and including ourselves and proud of our team and how we've kind of uh, come through this even stronger than before we started and really looking forward to making all those plans and actions really kind of hitting the running sprint mode in 2022 and seeing where it carries us beyond 2022. And I know everybody's ready to get back to a more normal operating mode and, and really looking forward to, to executing all the strategies we've have in place to uh, see where that goes. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, getting back to normal, you're going to be attending SEMA in person, the company is exhibiting. What can attendees expect to see? Uh, yeah, we're really excited about SEMA. You know, we, we, we love going to the show. It's a great show. Um, great, great interaction with our customers, both our partners and our end customers. Um, we will be at SEMA. Um, we're going to be in the South Hall. Uh, we have a nice 50 by 100 booth at SEMA. We'll be bringing some of the products we've talked about today, new wide in ground, alignment lifts, our uh, wheel service equipment, our great two post and four post lifts. Uh, Chief, our, our collision business will also be in the booth. Uh, really looking forward to kind of bringing everybody back together um, for SEMA. Uh, again, we'll be obviously um, to keeping safety in mind as we kind of work through the show, but we'll have a great team. Uh, I know a lot of other suppliers are excited about being at SEMA. Hopefully our end customers are being there. And to me, it's really, I think, celebrating about being open, uh, supporting the industry, and really looking forward to hopefully seeing a lot of people uh, at SEMA for sure. Great. Well, Tim, thank you for your time today and going over new uh, vehicle lift technology opportunities, also challenges, and for uh, insight into VSG's focuses going into next year. Hey, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time and have a great rest of your afternoon. For more information on Rotary, visit rotarylift.com. Thanks for watching.